Welcome to Mobile World Live. Delighted to be joined by Mark Halfinger, who is CEO of PCCW Global. Mark, welcome. Thanks very much. Good to see you again after a long time. Yeah, it's great to have you here. So Mark, uh, network as a service adoption is really gathering pace, particularly with widespread adoption to the cloud. Uh, how do platforms like Console Connect help with that transition? Well, thanks. Thanks for the lead up question. Console Connect is our network as a service brand, which is an automated fabric, which is also integrated with our AS3491 backbone. A network as a service really has a couple of components. First and foremost, the ability to technologically deliver on-demand services through an API. And uh, by any user establishing a port on the Console Connect platform, can establish automated connectivity, user to cloud, cloud to cloud, user to network, or network to network. And that's really remarkable. Importantly, on-demand really also means a commercial imperative, the ability to order a service on demand, just for a day, just for a week, just for a month, that becomes unique. So the ability to integrate the commercial offering with the technical capability is what's fueling the on-demand requirement so that users really are only leveraging network against their cloud requirements or their applicational developments, particularly as they require them. And I think that that's quite exciting. I mean, tying in with that, I know PCCW is transitioning from a traditional carrier into more of a technology-based sort of company and a provider. Um, how do you see that evolving? What is the work involved and where do you think that will leave PCCW Global in the future? Well, about five years ago, back in 2017, PCCW Global financially acquired Console Connect, but emotionally, Console Connect, a technology company, acquired PCCW Global. And since that time, frankly, we have become technology-led. We have effectively transformed from what some would have called a legacy telco that operates a global network to a technology-led platform that uses the network as its value add. The key to our business today is technology. That's required dramatic shift. Huge amounts of training of our colleagues, reshaping our organization to a scaled agile framework mindset throughout the organization worldwide, assuring that our 1,500 colleagues around the globe are aware and trained constantly, certified to scaled agile framework principles, operating according to those structures, making sure that everyone understands that everything we do has to be functioning cloud native in a sensible way. You can't be on both sides of the environment. And so we took a strong decision back at the end of 2017 that we are a technology company. So we do that in everything that we, that we have. Certainly we bring with us certain characteristics that existed in the legacy network environment, particularly around personal service. And we do assure that some of that capability, 24 by seven customer service, 24 by seven security operations service, all of those activities come together with the technology-led console connect. But we have already performed our own transformation. And a major technology you're involved with is IoT. Now IoT has been around for, for many years, but how do you see it now evolving, particularly post-pandemic, in terms of use cases? Okay, so the first part to understand, obviously, is that you have a global network, which we've always had and operated. Second. We've explained that we've automated that with the network as a service or automation capabilities around Console Connect. And then the next step is, how do you include key features of development that are meaningful for communities to create their own ecosystems of value through the Console Connect automated fabric? One of those key communities is in fact the IoT ecosystem. We have established an IoT ecosystem across Console Connect which allows any IOT application to do many things, including provisioning eSIMs on an automated basis throughout the environment. And on our stand here at MWC, we've chosen to bring eight to 10 different IOT ecosystem providers who leverage our capabilities so that they can demonstrate what they're doing. So we see use cases such as IOT, such as security, such as UCAS, as being part of the ecosystem of communities that can individually establish themselves through the automated platform without our intervention, without sales people filling out forms and so on, but rather a user comes on, an application, a 
cloud, a network, creates that community of value, and IoT, I think, is one of the most meaningful use cases out there that's able to leverage our network, our GRX capability, everything that we're able to do in eSIM, MVNO, and MVNE, and all of that on an automated basis. And of course, you also heavily involved in the connectivity business. But How are connectivity yeah. requirements changing for IoT projects? Well, I, I think that what's important when we stress the concept of having a fabric that delivers the automation is also to assure that you can give QoS, quality of service. You wouldn't want some sort of meaningful IoT application, particularly let's say around health or wellness, that is dependent on latency or qualities or so on, that could even be meaningful for, for life to have some sort of complexity associated to QoS. Having a core backbone infrastructure together with our own underlying transmission means that we're the primary fabric out there that also has a network and the only network arguably that also has a fabric. That means that we're able to deliver the automation but also assure the QoS is there. And I think that's a key element of, of connectivity. Clouds today are delivering infrastructure as a service but they're doing that often in a statistical fashion. We provide access to that cloud infrastructure but we do so with a guarantee of what the quality will be to get there. Mark, really insightful. Thanks for your time. It's great to see you again as always, and I hope you enjoy the show this year. You too.